Kristen, let's talk about your situation because, sure. man, you, you were blogging and sending out mm -hmm. to friends. And, and I love keeping in touch with you. And, and oh, just, yes. um, uh, it, it, it's so good. And boy, this was such a, I mean, for God, it's just another thing. It's just another right. place place for him. But, but it was, yeah. I, I'm going to call it a really dramatic event. I know it, it was, was for your family as it well. It was. And really, it, I mean, I, be, I really feel as though it really was a miracle for us. This with the little boy is son. a miracle yeah. baby. Yeah. yeah um, it's his last pregnancy. Yes, right. And so I basically, um, you know, we found out we were expecting last January. And I had some early, some, some problems early on. Um, we spent the night when I was 10 weeks uh, long in the ER thinking we were having a miscarriage. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of a fairly common early pregnancy problem, um, which um, took a couple weeks to sort of resolve. And then I kind of had trouble with again. And um, but then it looked like as I got into my second trimester, things were going to be fine. <clears throat> uh, when I was 16 weeks, so barely four months, um, basically my water broke, and which is an extreme situation. For you guys um, out there, translation, this is not a good thing. Yeah, it's not a good yeah, thing at all. Not at all. So, so, and it wasn't diagnosed. Um, no. No, it wasn't officially diagnosed. And um, the th it's not like I, I was, so I was losing amniotic fluid, which is the life source to the baby. Okay. Yes. So it's, it's, you know, it's protection. It, it, um, it's nourishment. It's how the baby, you know, moves and starts to practice breathing. I mean, it's just crucial for the baby's development and life. And, um, and it wasn't diagnosed that the doctor kind of felt like it was still some type of continuation from the earlier problem I had. Um, I, and I kept checking in saying, are you sure? Because, you know, deep down, I think I knew, but it's the one thing where I, I knew it had to be something horrible. And, you know, when, when your doctor's telling you, um, I really don't think it's that. That's all I wanted to know, because, you know, I knew that if it was it would be very bad and so um right around in the middle of my 19th week I, we went in to find out what we were having and that was when they did the, the ultrasound and um i got a, i received a phone call about 15 minutes after we left saying your amniotic fluid level is very low we need to get you in to see a perinatologist on monday this was a friday um and as soon as the nurse told me that, I mean, I nearly fainted because I had been walking around for over three weeks in this state, losing this fluid that is so vital to the baby's life. And so we ended up going into the hospital um, to, uh, to labor and delivery. And um, Christian, at this point, let me interrupt you. You're yeah. not even halfway through the pregnancy. No, yet. no, I'm, I'm barely four I'm, weeks. Ba yeah, four months. Yeah, four, four months. Yeah, into it, yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, it's just you know, this can't be happening. Is basically what I'm thinking. And and so we went into the hospital. And, and of course they did all the tests and they confirmed and once the doctor really realized he heard my story and I explained things and that I had been walking around for almost four weeks what they call ruptured meaning um, you know when you go into labor and most women know this you know when your water breaks usually it's right before you're going to deliver and typically you go into labor within like 12 to 24 hours right and, and that's safe that's normal. yeah and they don't and a lot you know nowadays they don't even want you to go longer than that because you're you're at such great risk of infection um, and so here I am you know I've been walking around for almost four weeks in this state losing wow. this precious you know fluid and and so um basically the doctor just sat sat us down and said we're in a very dangerous situation here um you're at risk of a, a very serious infection and becoming septic and basically he told me that you know he's had it happen he's seen loss of life he's telling me i could it happened so quickly um that you know he's like you could you could lose your uterus and at very worst you could lose your, you could die and he was just like, so we, we need to induce your labor right now and, and get this baby delivered. And the baby will not make it. But he's not going to probably make it anyway. And just on and on and on. And, and, and here we are. You know, we went in the hospital. I knew there was problems. I, I think I had in my mind that we might end up losing the baby. But I had no idea they were going to ask us to essentially terminate. And here I am. I'm at 20 weeks. I'm sitting there. I'm hooked up to the monitors. I can hear his heartbeat, which was consistent the entire time, all of these, even through all these problems. And I can feel him moving. And the doctor's telling me, you know, essentially we need to, to um, terminate. terminate. And this is for your benefit. My daughter, Stella's face, I'm just thinking about her. She can't, you know, all I could think is I can't leave her. I can't, she can't not have her mommy. But then, like I said, I'm, I'm. Mm -hmm. They have this precious life inside of me. And I mean, it was beyond a nightmare. I had no, I could have never imagined being faced with that in 23 weeks, which is when they consider the baby viable, meaning the baby could potentially exist outside of the womb because at 20 weeks, I mean, there's pretty much no chance of it even surviving a birth. Mm -hmm. So I made it to 23 weeks. I was home on bed rest. You know, every night was, was just 
excruciating every 24 hours trying to get through not knowing at any point am I gonna what's gonna happen and um, so 23 weeks was admitted to the hospital they kept telling me um, you know you're gonna deliver any time and weeks passing and I made it to 38 and a half weeks which is <laughs> I mean and the doctors kept telling me up there Tell them about the fluid, too. Well, the fluid. Okay, so, you know, I told you I, I had was, I'd, I'd gotten down to almost no fluid. Right. And I remember the doctors there in that first hospital stay, you know, they kept telling me, you know, well, you might regain a little bit, but you'll, ne- you'll never get to a normal level. Well, a couple, a week or so after being in the hospital up in St. Louis, um, I began reaccumulating all my fluid. And by like the last probably month, they, you know, they were testing me every, and we were doing ultrasounds and stuff every few weeks. I had at one point, an above normal amount. <laughs> I mean, and didn't incredible. they tell you that your particular injury, the, the type of tissue that, that it is, it doesn't heal? Yeah, there was kind of debate amongst the doctors of what was really happening and why I all of a sudden was reaccumulating all this fluid. Some believe that, that you know, something was sort of blocking it. Others said it was actually healed. You know, they kind of would go back and forth. But the one doctor that really studies in depth a lot of this, is, you know, he said, obviously, it's it's it's... It's sort of being blocked, but but he explained that those tissues never actually regenerate to heal, and he he was amazed. I mean, they just they kept saying, "You're we're in uncharted territory with you. We don't see this. We don't know what to do with you." Wow. Uh, I mean, literally. And so, you know, um, they just kept you know. Typically in that situation, if a woman makes it to 34 weeks, they'll deliver. Well, here I got to 34 weeks. I had more than enough fluid, and nothing. You know, everything. The baby looked great on ultrasound. The one thing they did not know the entire time was the lungs. Um, that time that I was without all that fluid is a crucial. A period of development in the baby's lungs and so you know when we were first admitted we toured the NICU we met with all of the neonatologists because they didn't know and so even as we made it to delivery day we still didn't know what was going to be because they cannot see the lungs that's the one one of the one things for wow. everything they can see on the ultrasounds and measure and look at they cannot really truly tell about the lung development um, they did an amniocentesis at 37 weeks um, and showed that the lungs weren't quite ready so again we we waited we just kept waiting and and then I kind of started on my own in that middle of that 38th week and and he came out you know whimpering and then screaming which was <laughs> Lungs which just was incredible fine. and everybody in the opera you know all these doctors that had been you know seeing me all this time I mean they were just elated I mean they were laughing and you know well he's listened to that you know <laughs> um and you know and he uh, he was six pounds five ounces which is pretty darn good I'd say considering I would everything say so. um, Absolutely. you know and uh but yeah and it's really it's really amazing and they and they continuously told me they were all stunned at the outcome five months Four, four uh, and a half, five? Well, let's see. So, well, in, in the hospital? No, no. no. S- since he's oh, been oh, born. Oh, since he's been born. Yeah. He's, so he was five months on last Wednesday. Five months old. Fine. Yeah. I mean, just, just yeah, in fact, I mean, he's growing. In, it's amazing. He's over 16 pounds now. <laughs> <laughs> he's just, you know, he's making up for you know, making any up for, lost time. That's for sure. Tell you what, one of the most prayed for pregnancies oh, and little boy that absolutely. I've never, ever uh, The outpouring for us was incredible. I mean, not only in our community and all of the churches back home, but also, I mean, online, you know, it, like you said, I mean, I was getting emails and notes from people all over the country, you know, just through friends and family. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was just amazing. It was, we were so covered in prayer. That's such a great story. Yeah. Love to hear it. Thank you, Kristen. Mm-hmm. Kristen, Chrissy, and Elisa are here the group formerly known as Zoe Girl, together for six years, and then uh, they split and went their separate ways about a little over four years ago. I'm glad we're back in the studio together uh, again this morning. This is neat. We're going give, uh, to have some giveaways to, uh, to handle in just a little bit, and more with the ladies coming up in a bit. In fact, got a Zoe Girl song next on Mix 92.9.